Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've been feeling kind of stressed lately, and and I was just thinking, oh, I just wanna, I just wanna be a kid again, right? And so I thought, hey, why don't I play with some crayons? And I wasn't gonna film this, but then I thought, you know, this will be fun. This will be fun to see if we can create a decent piece of artwork with crayons, and that's what we're gonna do today. So here I have some Crayola Twistable Crayons and Mr. Sketch Twistable Crayons. I've got some. Uh, some of my kids old um, Crayola regular style crayons and um, I've got some paper here. Now I am using uh, watercolor paper because I think I might need that extra tooth to grab the crayon. Now I did a little kind of swatch practice of the twistable crayons. I did this little rose um, and I swatched off the Mr. Sketchies which blended beautifully. They were very bright and then I just kind of swatched out my Crayola twistables. Some have multiple colors in them, some are metallic. I didn't swatch out these but I thought I might need these for the project that we're going to do and um, we're gonna have fun. Now I want, I've taped down my paper because I'm using crayons. They're not gonna blend like oil pastels or regular pastels or watercolor so I didn't want to have too big of a surface so I figured this will be just about right and that way I'll have a nice pretty border when I'm done. And I showed you guys on my YouTube channel how to make a tool so that you can um, very easily like make um, like horizon lines and stuff. So these are angles from the Dollar Tree and I just made one thick by, um, my husband actually took a piece of wood and kind of made it so I could put two of these together. Does that make any sense? There's a video on my channel you can check out. But I'm gonna use this to make a nice straight horizon line. I am gonna sketch that in with a pencil just so I have that down, but that's the only mark I'm going to make here. There we go. And I can set that aside. So if you just look, see how it's two of those Dollar Tree L angle things um, with a piece of wood in between. You could also cut uh, foam core from the Dollar Tree and stack up a few layers to make the same thing. If you don't have a, you know, if you're not a woodworker or you don't have, you know, a husband who's a woodworker or a wife who's a woodworker, um, you could do that as well. So I'm going to start with the twistable crayons, but I might go to these if I feel like I need some other colors. I really like the Mr. Sketch ones the best. So if you are looking for some, maybe you're a parent and you want to get, um, you know, some for your kids. I'm going to start with a really light layer of this purple and the Mr. Sketch ones smell. Do you remember their markers? They used to have those smelly markers. Those are actually really nice too. Like if you're a rubber stamper, you can color on your stamps and use them instead of ink pads. Um, I always loved the Mr. Sketch products. So I'm going really light because I know I'm going to want to try to blend my colors together. And um, yeah, this is kind of a slow process. I don't even know if I'll end up uh, posting this video or not because it is kind of silly so you twist these up when you need more lead. Um, but I thought hey why not. I was actually have been going through my supplies as well and kind of like thinking about getting rid of some different things. I have a big box going for my friend who has a daycare uh, to go to her kids. So I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I haven't used these in a long time. I should really give them a try. Maybe I can find a really awesome artistic use for them. Or if I can, then it would be great to donate these. So we will see. This will be the, this will be the test, friends, of whether I should keep or donate. They're kind of pretty. What, um, the one thing I don't like about these pencils, and I think they might be, you know, kids might run into issues with these, is that... I did have a couple like snap, like the, not the Mr. Sketchy ones, but the Crayola ones, and I'm sure these could do the same, kind of snap on me, so, you know, that could definitely happen. Now let's do this, let's see what this purple, this is a, a metallic one, I think. There's a, some of these have like some wax bloom on them because they have uh, just been sitting around for a long time and the wax comes to the surface. Like these don't feel as good as the Mr. Sketchy ones. Let's go to kind of a pinkish red color. You can unwrap, uh, like unwrap them a bit and sharpen them, but when you try to twist them, the sharpen sharpener ends up like often ends up like kind of twisting them back down the barrel. So um, I don't know. I didn't have great luck luck sharpening them, but you can. I'm gonna go over to the regular crayons. Let's see how good old. Boy, there's a lot more colors in this, isn't there? Ooh, these look nice. I remember um, when I was a kid, and we'd go on these long car rides. I hated riding. I still don't like to ride in the car, but I really hated riding in a car when I was a kid. Red, Violet, and Charisse. Um, but I really, really hated riding in a car when I was a kid. And I remember coloring when I was a kid once, and I was using this fuchsia crayon, and I got so carsick 
just, I don't think I threw up, but I, you know how you just feel so car sick sometimes when you're riding in a car? And I could not look at the color fuchsia for years. Like that, the, just the color would put me off. The color would make me feel sick to just see it. Um, <laughs> and I'm fine now, but I do kind of laugh about that. And anytime I see that color, that kind of like bright fuchsia. I'll have to be confused with magenta, which is a little bit more of a pure color. I'm adding some of this. This blue up here. It seems like the uh, these pencil, these uh, crayons rather, are harder than the old school Crayolas. I am planning on using some Gamzol too to blend these together. So that's another reason I wanted a really robust, robust. Oh my gosh, learn to talk today. Robust paper. I'm gonna do some red underneath here. Now, I wouldn't recommend these to someone that has strength issues like arthritis. Um, I know adult coloring is super popular. Um, I still feel like I have to give a, more pressure with these than I would like a regular crayon. I think if you want something like this, honestly, I wouldn't really recommend these for, for artists. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's just fun to play. Um, I would probably say go with an oil pastel. Because you do have to put a lot more pressure with the crayons than with... I mean, I'm not putting a lot of pressure, but it's definitely more than I'd have to do with an oil pastel before I'd be able to start blending anyway. So, I'm just... I don't know. I I got rid of a lot of stuff when I con married. For some reason, I didn't get rid of these. I decided to hang on to them. I think because... I don't know if you remember, a few years ago, there was this... Um, and I think they still might be around. There was a line of products called Design Memory Craft. And they were kind of like, like, there was crayons and there were a bunch of different things that were kind of like, they remind me of kids' products, but they were actually made for adults. And they had these twistable crayons that looked just like the Crayola twistables. And I'm like, I'm not spending $12 for like three colors or four colors, whatever it was. Um, so I got, I bought some of these instead just to kind of play around with them. And I think the product's been discontinued and you never really saw many people use it. It never took off. But, um, I don't know, sometimes I think, like, you get an idea, and then you're like, oh, I'm not ready to abandon that yet, you know? All right, I hope these will blend out. They actually feel kind of nice, even though, like I said, that you have to press harder. They do really feel nice. I'm going to grab the white, which is not super soft, but it does seem to be opaque enough. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of, uh, I'm doing a sunset, by the way. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> oh, guys. Now this is one of those colors that um, that snapped on me, and I tried. Don't try this at home. Oh my gosh! I used a lighter, and I tried to um, to light the end of the stick where it broke and shove it back in there to melt it, like fuse it in with the color that I had before, and uh, and it didn't work. Long story short. But I had, it was like dripping wax, and so I, I had my trash can handy. So I'm like, I'll just drip that wax into the trash can. And uh, <laughs> my trash can also contains a lot of pencil shavings. And there must have been enough of like a little spark on that wax. I dripped in there. My, there was a fire in my trash can. Luckily, I spotted it right away. And I had a, uh, you know, my paint water <laughs> handy, and I, doubt, I could doubt, douse it. But um, I was like, oh, that's not a great idea. And it was really funny because my husband just got back from um, the hardware store and he had just picked up a new fire extinguisher, like a, a spare fire extinguisher. Uh, and he's like, well, I guess we know where this one's going. <laughs> All right, now wonder if I can use, oh shoot, I got a little, you gotta be careful of your crumbs. I got a little crumb of orange in my white sun there, but I think that's gonna be stuck because I just burnished it down. I'm gonna try burnishing over the yellow with this white. So I am using quite a bit of pressure, so I would not extend the lead. Oh, it is blending pretty well. I would not extend the lead too far because you don't want to, um, you don't want to snap it. I find that if you do put it back in and you roll it back, the, the barrel will still protect it. So this will keep your hands clean if like you've had issues with your hands not staying clean with crayons before. I've really never had that issue because crayons have wrappers on them. And I'm blending now out with this white. I am getting some crumbs. I Is anyone actually following along? I can't imagine. I, you guys are probably just like, Lindsay, you're just watching because out of morbid curiosity, what is she doing with crayons? I'm in my blanket fort coloring to escape the stress that I've been feeling. <laughs> hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Look at 
that it's really uh, this. I think because this watercolor paper has a good texture to it. It is like this is Hannah Mule. Um, it's a watercolor block. Harmony, I think. Is that the one? Let me just see. It came in this. This one came in a smart art box, I think. Um, oh great! I taped the thing shut. <laughs> What's this called? Like anybody cares. Harmony. I was right. It's so funny. I have a really good memory for like art supplies, but I have a lousy memory for a lot of like you know. <laughs> essential tools of life. <laughs> All right, let's grab some of that pink. I wonder if I, oh, maybe I'll go into the uh, softer. I feel like the twistables might have more pigment to them, but the traditional crayons are softer. Let's see. It's also really easy to figure out. So that gets going to cast a shadow. If I leave that there, I better put it over here. Uh, Hmm, I can't tell if it's leaving any color behind. But even if it doesn't, I think it's going to help blend. So if you're doing this on a smoother paper, it's not going to be so hard to blend, but it's also not going to take so many layers. So that might be a good or a bad thing, I'm not sure. It is a little bit tedious, because you know it's not like a pencil where you're going to sharpen it to get it into those crevices. This would be way better with oil pastel. <laughs> and odd, like ironically, I do have some oil pastels that, I'm, that I really need to review, but um, I needed to do something that wasn't precious. This is violet red. What was the other one? Red violet? I think so. Violet red. I'm going to go up here a little bit more with that, see if I can fill in that green. I think it's going to be pretty though um, when we take our tape off. You know what? If you're an art teacher, this might be a really fun project for your art students, for like kids and stuff. And like, I'm kind of rushing because I'm really curious to see how it's going to come out. But you know, I think you could definitely, if you're like an art teacher, um, you know, doing like a Zoom lesson or something, I, and by all means, please use any ideas you see. Like if you're a, like a public school teacher or something like that, and you see an idea, absolutely go ahead and, and, um, and teach it to your kids. I have no problem with that. Oh yeah, I think once I blend this out with some mineral spirits, I think it's going to work really well. Again, cannot stress enough, not for people with arthritis, I'm feeling shoulder, uh, I'm feeling some, some shoulder strain already. I mean, nothing like, nothing serious. And it's probably partially because I'm going so fast. I want to see how it comes out. I'm so excited. They say the the way to get something done is to have a plan and not quite enough time to do it. And I think that's true. I got to go take uh, my daughter for some driving practice in a little bit. So probably part of my stress is the fact that my twin daughters have been are you know going for the driver's test and yeah, it's stressful. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's try some more of this blue. I think also if I use these on like paper that wasn't on a block and I used it on like a heated board, it would also be a lot easier to blend. I'm going to knock off all these crumbs before I even attempt the mineral spirits. Um, um, I have a variety of these twistable crayons and some are metallic. Like this one's a metallic one. See how it almost it's more opaque? I'm going to add some of that in there. I feel like I need a little bit more of like uh, a red. What's that color look like? Yeah, that's a nice red. The bloom can make it really deceiving as to what the colors are. Oh my gosh, it's very, very crumbly on this paper. Um, I wonder if I have like a midnight blue in the old Cadet, Cadet blue? Oh gosh, it doesn't really have much pigment to it. Yeah, my kids, as you can see, this box of Crayola is not very well used because um, honestly, my kids have free reign to my art supplies. So I've probably had this box. Like it's probably a date on the box. Let's see, does it say? Oh, there's a sharpener. Um, I'm gonna probably spill all these. What year is this? Out of morbid curiosity, I don't know. I should, have pre I should have planned better. I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> well, not that long ago. Um, 
But yeah, they've always had like free range for my art supplies. I don't like there's really not much as hands off unless it's a safety concern or like a huge mess concern where they would need like um you know supervision. But I've always been very uh very open to letting the kids use my stuff. Now, I definitely, if I when I pick up one of these twistables after using the regular Crayolas, they definitely feel much more pigmented, even though they are a little bit harder. I feel like it, they're harder because they have less wax and more pigment. Oh, we got a little crumb of green in there from something. Oh, I think it's like a from sharpening or something. And let's see. And some of these have like three colors in them. This one actually has blue and black. This one might be good for up, up on the edges. Oh, I don't know. It's also got a gray that I'm not crazy about. But I've already put some down, so why not? This is going to be really interesting when it blends. I'm going to use my um, Gemzol and my little brush I use for color pencil. So I may, I may regret this and wish I had a bigger brush, but... Oh, you know what? Let's. I'm going to brush this off into the trash, too. I don't want uh, unnecessary crumbs. Alright, so I have my odorless mineral spirits in a little jar with cotton balls and that way I can like make sure I don't have too much on my brush. I'm going to start with the white area. And just kind of blend outward. I don't need to clean my brush, I can just pick up some more. You, I, If you're just blending the same area or you're going to an adjacent color, I would not try to clean that pigment out of your brush because it will actually just re get redisperse back onto your paper and give you more pigment. So I just kind of go in and add to it. Unless I'm changing, a, like, a, like I was going to purple next or something, I would want to really, uh, really clean it. I'm just trying to kind of get the, get these colors merged. I think um, even like an oil painting brush would probably work really well because that would be stiffer even and it would be easier to uh, it would be easier to kind of push the pigment around. Oh, this is very calming. Honestly, I gotta say, and you can put more over top after you've done this. So if like you're you do this and you're like, oh I wish I had I wish I'd put more color or I wish I had more of this or that, you can put more on top. Like I might want to just put some more yellow in there and kind of blend it out. Kind of soften the transition a little bit. Here we go. So any sort of solvent should work uh, pretty well. Any sort of oil or solvent. So like if you're doing this project with kids and you want to do this take this part here, um, and you don't want to have, um, and you don't want to have like a solvent, and maybe you're teaching remotely. Because I think this probably when I post if I post a Crayola crayon uh, picture, it's probably going to appeal more to uh, to parents. Um, then you could use baby oil and Q-tips and just give them like a little. Um, Oh, a little, just a little like a bottle cap and put some baby oil in it and give them some Q-tips and just tell them to change your Q-tip when they go to like um, a different color and just use a different Q-tip Q for each color and throw them away when you're done because they will fray. They're not going to last that long. So now as I'm getting into these purples, what I want to do is actually clean my brush. So I'm just going to wipe my brush on that cotton ball. And I, you don't have to change those cotton balls too often. I mean, like I just took one out that was getting pretty, pretty grimy. But it had been in there for like probably a year and a half. They don't get most of the pigment when you do this technique, like with colored pencils, it stays on the paper. And you just want enough to help move it. I also like the baby oil idea because then most people have that in their home. They don't have to buy anything special. Most people have crayons and baby oil. And this is just more convenient for me because I had this, I always have this in my desk. And um, baby oil is not a drying oil, uh, so it will kind of like, uh, it will kind of evaporate, so it's not going to be greasy or anything, but it's, um, 
like if you spill it, it's not gonna like dry and leave like uh, some mess that you can't clean up. And if it gets on their skin, it's not gonna hurt them because it's baby oil. It's basically mineral oil with fragrance in it. So I love that. I love this non-toxic you're using. You can use non-toxic products for this. Try to blend this black out. I think I got a little too much. There, that removed a lot of the grain. I'm gonna wipe my, my brush off. Oh, and I'll uh, link the reference photo down below, but it's by Sebastian Goldberg over at unsplash.com. If I forget, or if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're watching it on your smart TV or something and you can't see the video description. So the interesting thing here is I'm no the water actually is not reflecting the sky colors. It's got more blue in it. So um, that's so it's so hard for me to do that because I want to just reflect the sky colors, but that's not what I see here in this reference photo. So I am going to... Do what I see in the reference photo, and I'm just going to load her up with the blue here. The same, I'm using the same blue from the sky, even though the blue in that picture does look a little bit more turquoise -y. I might use a little bit, um, I might use, add a little bit of that like tealy color into it. Mmm, smells like blueberries. It smells like artificial blueberries. I gotta make sure I don't get that, um, those blue crumbs up in my beautiful yellow sky. You know, I think I do want to put a little bit of, uh, purple in there. This is so, it's very strange. This is a strange sunset. People are going to comment, they're going to be like, you don't know how to draw a sunset because you are putting everything in wrong. And I'm going to just direct you to that reference photo. <laughs> because no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm putting in what I see. I'm going to use a little bit of this. Is this one metallic? I think it might be. Oh, mm, that's really making that, that's really activating that blueberry scent. So if you don't like scented products, you might want to stay away from the Mr. Sketchy products. Mr. Sketch? Mr. Sketchy. Mr. Sketch. Um, I happen to like it. Blend it together. I left a little gap because there is like a little bit of um, some land in the background and I think I'm going to drop it down a little bit lower than what I had there for the horizon line. I think that would look really sweet. So I am leaving a little bit of a gap there. And I'll be bringing the black down on top of this. I think I might add just a little bit of red. Uh, not that red, that's not very pigmented. Just because it does, it bothers me too. It's going to bother viewers and it bothers me that I do not see any of that red in here. I can't unknow what I know. All right, let me tap that off over the track. And we're gonna go back in with our odorless mineral spirits. The crayons are gonna dirty up your odorless mineral spirits a lot faster than the um, than color pencil will, just because it's got so much more viscosity to it. You're picking up a lot more media when you do this. But this basically is to get rid of the grain of the, the look of the grain of the paper and also remove some of the wax so you can layer on top. Which really wouldn't be that big of a problem because the tooth of the paper does let you will you, let you keep layering, but it would be very difficult to get enough crayon on there to fill in the tooth and then be able to layer on, you know, layer our little mountain or whatever that is, land in the distance. And that is something that I want to do. And I'll probably put some like ripples and stuff like that with a crayon. I don't think I can do it while it's wet. I'm just gonna wipe off this brush before I forget. I probably will need to change the, key, the rest of the cotton balls after that, but, and I do, even though it's odorless, I do close it up when I'm done so that I don't end up breathing in anything 
that I don't want to. So now I'm wondering if I can... I don't know. I'm wondering if I can go into that wet area. It's going to flatten the tooth if I do, so... Yeah, it's not really... That's not leaving any pigment. Maybe the Mr. Sketch will. Uh, not really. I think i got to let that dry. So, uh, I'm going to pause the camera. We'll be back... Ooh. If you have any crumbs on the sky, get those wiped off too. Um, I'll be back in a minute when the bottom part is dry and we will uh, we'll carry on. So as I was looking at this, I was thinking, you know, I kind of would like some clouds, even though there really aren't... I mean, I guess I can see like a little bit of like cloudiness. I kind of want to see if I can throw some clouds in here now that there is... now that I've like kind of... Um, soften that layer and I think it might actually work out really well because um, because I have kind of uh, removed a lot of the extra wax so I'm just going in with this white and seeing if I can add any I don't know I actually feel like I'm just kind of digging up some of the uh, some of the pigment underneath so I don't know if this is gonna work but I think that's where you um, where you kind of have a hard time, I'm gonna brush off those crumbs. Where you kind of have a hard time with the Crayola crayons versus like say an art crayon. I've never used like the Neocolor ones, which are like a, an artist wax based crayon. Um, and actually, I thought maybe if I play with these, it'll either convince me that I need to get the Neocolor ones, or um, or it'll say, nah, that's not your cup of tea, and I'll be able to tell that from this uh, less expensive <laughs> product. But I don't know. They're just like I don't know. If you use the Neocolor ones by Karen Dosh, please let me know what your experiences are and if they're worth the um, the extra moolah. I, I feel like I'm just kind of scraping off color. That's no good. But I want to keep this just to Crayola or just to crayons rather than going in with oil pastels. So, ah, that's not going to work. Okay, I'm just going to leave that sky as is with the weird... Maybe I'll see if I can blend those clouds out because it was like horrendous. I mean, they're not even like, they're not even that, like, bright, but they just, they are bright, oh, goodness, I broke my crayon. I broke my crayon! I'll try to, this is going downhill fast, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I have, what was that dark Crayola blue? Was this one? Ooh, it's very crumbly. Maybe I do need Neo Color ones. Let me know what you think about those. I just saw a review of those, actually. They've been around a while. I love the Neo 2s, but I don't know. I just don't know. All right. Yeah, I don't feel like it's like more sticking though. This is weird. I thought more pigment would stick. I think I might give these away. I think these are going to go in the. I think these are going to go in the donation donation box. I'm giving them. I'm giving them a fair shot though, guys. I'm not being hasty, but you know what? I bet those kids at the daycare are gonna be like, "Woo, new art supplies!" And I, if I haven't needed them in like the last, I don't know, since I come already, when's the last time I even used these? I certainly don't need them now. I think that. Um, oh, you know what? I think I'll take a piece of tape. Where'd my tape go? I'll use a piece of tape. Seriously, where's my tape? Mmm, I can use a piece of tape to stick it down. Let me... Oh, there we go. It's amazing, I can lose something that's right in front of my face. Let me know if that's a, if that happens to you too. Alright, I was going to use my T-square, but I was afraid I'd get too much wax on that. So what I'm doing is just setting, and this is really thin, I'm going to set that down right at the edge of where I put the, um, the blue. And I'm going to draw a, uh, like a little mountainy... mountain is the right word. It's just kind of like, you know, like when you're, um, you look out over the ocean and there's all, well, in Maine we have a lot of islands. We have a lot of islands off the coast of Maine. Um, and you, you go to like Acadia National Park and you look out and you see, you know, all these little bits of land and it's just all these islands that are out there. You're kind of like looking across them and you see all these little, these little islands. Sorry for the crazy noise in the background. That's my water pump. I'm in the basement. One of these days we might put a pump in the well instead of having it in the basement. But boy, oh boy, when you have an older house, you don't like to go. You don't like to go looking for trouble. You know, you don't like to go poking around <laughs> in the depths of things. You really don't. 
Yeah, it's like I've watched way too many home improvement shows where they take out a wall and it's like <laughs> you see like electricity arcing and stuff, and it's like, oh, those are aluminum wires. They didn't even use those in a hundred years. My house isn't that old, but it's like from the seventies. Uh, but still, it's like yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go look for trouble. <laughs> Okay, where's my brush? Ah, oh, there we go. I'm not, I'm just gonna try to like dissolve some of those crumbs. Are we still in frame? I think this is actually gonna be kind of pretty. Oh yeah, it's just lifting it right up over that white. I'm gonna have to go back in. I should have probably brushed the crumbs off. I don't want to use too much. I think I got too much on my brush. If you use too much, you might actually end up lifting up the pigment. It's okay to have a little bit of a glow of that color from the sunset on your um, on your thing because it will uh, it'll look like it's kind of like reflecting and the light is bouncing off those mountains, and that's fine. You do a little bit of a, like a halo of that color on the reference photo even. I didn't pick anything too like elaborate because I knew I wasn't going to spend a ton of time on this and I just play in and even if I did create something that was phenomenal, I mean, it's not going to be light fast or anything, so. Uh, if you go over the, if you go over it while it's wet, it does tend to want to lift. I wonder if I can pick up some color from the tip of this and bring it over. Really hoping the, the whatever makes these crayons smelly, like lovely fruity things, isn't like toxic when mixed with Gamsol. <laughs> what if I made a little palette by scribbling some of that out on this masking tape? I should just let it dry and go back in, but I'm so impatient. I'm very impatient these days. Why is that? I don't know. Let's see. Oh yeah, I need a little more purple underneath that though. I'm just gonna stick, stick that down right there because I have a feeling I might need that again before this painting is all said and done. Um, let's take, where's the purple? This is the purple I was using. I feel like I'm looking for trouble here with this one. I want the light gone. Ooh, now I can add some more. This is dry enough that I can add some more down here. That's nice. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. Where's the, I really think the Mr. Sketchy, you know what? If you're gonna buy these, buy the Mr. Sketchy ones. Maybe they have more colors now. As long as you don't mind the smell. It's very faint. It's very nice. It's not like an overpowering smell. It's blueberries and grapes, for goodness sake. It's not like it's, you know, stinky smells. It's good smells. All right. You know, it's okay. Okay, so now we're going to do some little blades of wheat. Uh, you could sharpen your your pencil if you want to. I mean your crayon if you want to. I'm not gonna. I'm just hoping I can stick enough down there. Oh yeah. This is gonna be lovely. This is like the most cliche, <laughs> the most cliche painting ever. Well, I guess it, no, it would be cliche if I did it in a proper medium. Now it's, I, it's, it's ironically cliche because <laughs> I'm doing it in crayons. No shade to anyone that else that's painted this painting. Actually, anybody else has painted this to do a YouTube tutorial totally knows what I mean and <laughs> should not be offended. <laughs> I'll do one up right here. Probably do this even with a colored pencil if you had one that was pigmented and soft. I'm keeping it to crayons, man. We're going to see what we can do with these. It's going to take way longer than if you used a proper media. <laughs> it's going to take way longer. It's not going to look as good. That's a selling... That, that's the... Uh, if you want it to take twice as long and have it not look quite as nice, 
do this. If you uh, value your time, use oil pastels or chalk pastels or golly, just about anything else, I think. <laughs> just about any other proper art media. Not colored pencils, that would even take longer probably. Maybe not though, if you had the right paper and the right pencils. It'd look better. <laughs> You know, this isn't, like, hideous or anything. All right, I am also going to just give it a little bit of a frame. Do some little grasses and just some little ground, basically. I did take out, there was, looks like there was, like, almost like a little bit of a road or something between these little, these little grasses and... In the pond or the ocean or the hex out there, whatever that body of water is. Let's see if I can can I oh that is saturated. I can't put any more in there. That's alright. Alright, and then I think I will just try to do a little bit of a frame up here. I wonder if I can just kind of smudge it out with my fingers, maybe. Doesn't really smudge too well with your fingers. All right, well guys, you ready to take the tape off and see how this turned out? I am. I've been, how long have we been working on this? A long time, feels like. Seems like an hour, probably not that long. Could be, I'm very bad at guessing times that tutorials take me. Are you going to do some artwork with crayons? <laughs> I probably will. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm not. Oh, gosh. You know, see, I'm ripping my paper, so I'm going to quickly heat the tape. Oh, you know, if you if you heat the, uh, you can see the wax get, like, shiny. Oh, it's funny. It's funny to look at. See the wax get all shiny. I'm easily amused today, guys. What can I say? I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to worry about the ripped paper because this is just for fun. And I hope you enjoyed this. i give you a little company on a spring day. Pass the time. Oh, crap. I just ran my fingernail across that and I scraped it. Shoot. Can I fix it? I think so. Man, oh man. Delicate, delicate little media, isn't it? I just scratched it with my fingernail. So delicate. Ha! Huh, that's kind of cute. I can't help it. It's kind of cute. I think, though, doing this project with some kids in a class, I think they would love this. If you're teaching, like maybe you have daycare, or you have, you're an art teacher, or you've got an after school program, you've got something like that, you're a mom or dad, and you want, or a grandparent, and you want to do a project with the kids, you don't need anything special paper really for this. Uh, I just used watercolor because I wanted to make sure I had something strong but you know it's fun it's easy it just it's a little it's time consuming which might be what you want for those kids give them some busy work when they are wanting to be creative and when you're done and you take the tape off it's like magic i will say though if you're going to use drawing paper and you're going to use tape um definitely heat it with a hair dryer before you try to pull that tape off because it will probably rip so if you do have watercolor paper even cheap watercolor paper like the canson xl or um anything you pick up at like the dollar store or something that's going to be a little bit better than drawing paper just if you're going to use the tape but otherwise, um, I don't think it matters what kind of paper you use it on. Just something that's not super slick. But there you have it. Uh, not bad for some crayons, huh? Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.